righty. Welcome back, everybody. It is the Tim Conway Jr. Show live on 97.1 FM Talk. And uh, we're here at the Staples Center watching Los Angeles Kings take on the St. Louis Blues. And there's a big fight on, in, on center ice here. There are four guys from St. Louis uh, kicking ass on one of the Kings, which is not fair. You know, second, third, fourth man in. That's unbelievable. Frank Kramer joins us. Frank back Kramer's the table. here, man. Look at I that. I still get a hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there's about a, a minute and 50 seconds left in the game. And if there's a fight in the last two minutes of the last period of the game in a blowout like this, the coach actually gets fined $10,000, I believe. Yeah. So he doesn't. The yeah, they try to limit all this crap at the end. Uh, I think the uh, the coach, uh, and the, the coach for the St. Louis Blues is a guy named uh, Coach uh, Murray, who used to coach the Los Angeles Kings. And now he's coaching the uh, Blues. So some bad blood there as well. Anyway, I can get another uh, bowl of nuts. <laughs> I swear. I tell you, I feel, look at this. He's getting, all four guys are beating up on this guy. I feel bad for uh, Frank Kramer. He comes down here, man. He drives all the way down here. He stays after his show. You stayed afterwards, right? I stayed in yeah, the city. Show, didn't go home. I'm like, I can drive all the way home, drive all the way down. And then, uh, so he comes Nuts. down here and he, he says, Can I just get a hot dog? I mean, I'm doing this crap for free for you, Conway. I was going to one ESPN hot dog and eat, but I was like, no, they're going to have food up there. They I don't know. have food. Bad vibes. All if right. I eat one more nut, I'm going to crap a payday. <laughs> but, uh, There's no more nuts? They're, they're out of nuts now? Oh. Jesus right, Christ. Right. Eat some of these lottery tickets. Here. All right, uh, folks, we have an audience who is a lot like myself. Just average, everyday guys who, uh, you know, make mistakes. Perhaps you uh, are ex- uh, overextended on your credit cards. Maybe you owe some back taxes. And uh, here to answer a couple quick, quick questions is a good friend of mine who I'm having lunch with tomorrow, Michael Rosbrook. Nice to see you, man. Hey, Timmy. How you doing? Yeah. The, you know Frank, Frank Kramer? Yeah. Absolutely, Frank. Yeah. We met. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Happy holidays. Happy. Or, uh, happy Hanukkah, right? Happy Kwanzaa. You enjoying happy your uh, Hanukkah? Christmas. When does that start? Hanukkah is the 21st. Is that right? Good for you. What are you expecting this year? Anything? Uh, well, we're trying to purchase a GM dealership. <laughs> you know, you can get those pretty cheap these days. <laughs> and if, if we can get one, we can probably get about $700 million in the bailout money. Yeah. Because nobody knows where it's going. So. All right. Michael runs Tax Resolution Services. He's a CPA. And i got to ask you a couple, couple quick questions here. Uh, I, everybody I know is in credit card debt. Yeah. Everybody I know is running a high balance. Um, if somebody, if you go to make a deal with a bank, is that better on your credit, on your overall credit score than if you go BK? Uh, it's probably going to be a little better, right? but not a lot. All right, but it is better. It is better, yeah. All right, and a bankruptcy stays on your credit for how long? Uh, seven to ten years. Ten years? Yep. You mean ten years after it's discharged? Yes, ten years after Holy you get the discharge. Christ. So it could be on there for 20 years. Yeah, it depends how long you're in bankruptcy. So what God about a foreclosure? Almighty. If you don't file for bankruptcy, they just foreclose on you. How long does that stay? Yeah, how Same. long is it? Foreclosure Same. is 10, 10 years? years? Yeah, it's about 10 years. Wait, if your house gets foreclosed on 10 years? Yep. And they're pretty strict with that kind of crap nowadays. Yeah, I mean, everything is based on FICO. I mean, right. the whole world is based on FICO score. Yeah, you got to make sure you got a decent but FICO l- score. Let me tell you something. The other foot hasn't dropped yet. There's $150 billion in credit card debt, unsecured, that the banks are going to be writing off in 2009. Oh, jeez. And you're not Christ. even hearing about that yet. Right, so it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse before it gets better. I, I heard that this is a, uh, a basically a drop in the bucket so far. It's a vicious cycle, you know. Once the foreclosures are up on the uh, in the neighborhood, it drives the prices down. Right. And then people lose their jobs. They lose the house. It drives the prices down. It's game over. Look at that. King six, St. Louis two. Uh, I'm sorry, we interrupt you at the end of the game that's, here. That's okay. So, so it drives the prices down, and you think they're going to go down even further? Yeah, I don't see. I don't think we've seen the bottom. In the Jesus middle. Christ! What do you expect? Predict the bottom to be? I, I think that okay. The first wave of these foreclosures was three years ago when people got the teaser rates. Those are the subprime rates. But then about about two years ago, are those are the rates that don't put out. Those are the rates. Yeah, those are the teaser rates. Teaser rates. Those are the rates that don't put out. Right. The ones that put out were called pick a pay rate where you had four boxes on right. your thing, and the last box was negative amortization. It said it in plain English. Right. 
and a lot of people checked that box and sent in their $1,300 payment. Right. And they don't realize they're adding another $1,300 to the principal. Oh, man. Those are going to be recast. And when I say recast, anytime the prices of a home goes down 25%, it automatically adjusts. Oh, boy. So these people, that wave is going to hit in 2009, 2010. Oh, Jesus. So you're going to see a, hundred, a whole nother slew of foreclosures. Now, when somebody has a credit card out there, my, my wife and I have, uh, we don't have many credit cards together, but we have uh, one or two together. And I had a, a $30,000 line of credit on one of the credit cards. I never used it. We, 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 we literally had it for five years, never used it. But she used it. She never used it either. And they sent us a letter saying that they reduced the credit from $30,000 to $1,500. Because you're not using it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good for you. That's, how is that great for me? I was going to retire on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to try and screw him in the end and retire You're on saving that. that card for retirement. <laughs> uh, even if you have a card like that without a credit, without using it, right. you should use it every now and then and just pay the balance the next day. And keep it active. Yeah. Now, when, when credit card companies look at, at your overall credit rating, do they take into consideration and is it good or bad to pay it off every time at the end of the month? It's good to pay it off. I mean, it's good if you if you pay it off at the end of the month. Uh, that's the best thing you can do, but you got to keep using the card, paying it off, using the card, paying it off. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, the best thing to do in, in, in anybody's circumstance, try to pay it off every month. Yeah, because that's going to give you the highest rating from that credit card company. Right. Now, can they can they just jack your rate up for no reason at all? They can jack your rate up if you uh, miss a payment, if you're late. Uh, if you read the fine print, they can go up to 23%, 24%. Is that right? Yeah. You know what I did, and and uh, this is the only I've only had two problems in the last ten years with a, a creditor. One was my house, where the day I was about to close on my house that I bought back in '03, the day before I was about to close, I had the moving van there and everything. We moved out of one house. We we're going to move all our crap in the new house. Uh, the the big financial company that was going to give me the uh, the loan that's bankrupt called, now. Yeah, right. That's bankrupt now. Called <laughs> called me and said it's going to be two per, two points more. We we didn't tell you this, but it's going to be two percent higher than we originally told you because we didn't realize that you had you know a, a negative um, you know credit rating or so. So I said I said you guys had that for thirty days or you know forty five days, and I and I I blew up on him. I don't blame you. And and he said and, and my friend of mine says that's the best thing to do. Because they will come back and not want to deal with lunatics like myself. <laughs> and they did. They brought it back down two points. But I guess you, you've you had some experience like that, too. The, the louder the roar, the more, uh, exactly. more you get done, huh? Yeah, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, and uh, the louder you yell, the more action you get. <laughs> I had, so I had, what if you never paid for a pair of socks that you bought at Sears in 1992? <laughs> well, if you bought them, it's a good question. If well, I never did. <laughs> they, they talked me into the Sears card, right. and then I forgot I even had it. And so I have a pair of black gold toe socks going to work as a waiter at Chee Chee's. And I, I never, I never paid him. Well, Sears can come back and, and pos- repossess those socks. <laughs> How much can my FICO score go down, or my, my my credit rating go down, just from not buying socks for almost twenty years? Nothing. Your feet will just smell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm cool then. I had another Sears. another problem with a uh, a car company when I had moved. They didn't forward me my new statement. Yeah. All right. So uh, they called me up and they said, you're 30 days late on your car. And I said, oh, I said, oh, S, I didn't realize that, um, you know, that I, I missed a payment. And they said, well, just because we don't send you a statement doesn't mean you can miss a payment. You're 30 days late and it's going on your, on your credit. And I said, I swear to God, if I look at my credit and it's on there, I'm going to drive this car to the nearest showroom where I, where I bought it. And I'm going to drive it through the effing showroom window. And I don't give a rat's ass what my credit does. I'm going to drive this car through the goddamn window. Because I was furious. Because I had made 50 straight months worth of payments and never had a problem with them. And I, I was late once because they didn't send me the statement. And they fixed it. Yeah, they, were, they, they, were they cool should with. allow us one skip. I mean, that that's ridiculous. Yeah, they were cool. Even the IRS allows one skip. Well, they look, do? Nobody yeah. wants to fight crazy. One, I mean, if, if you're getting into a fist fight and you think the guy's crazy, right? No, you run. Oh yeah. If, you, if he's trying to be tough, no. Right. If it's crazy, yeah. You're out. My dad taught me that because my dad in high school had a couple of guys at a bar like picking on him, 
and he knew he was going to get his ass kicked by these three guys, so he got up on the bar and he pretended he was a monkey. <laughs> and they took off. They're like, what the hell? Oh, this is lunatic. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but, no, the IRS says, again, Michael Rosberg's with us. He has uh, tax resolution services in the Valley. Um, you can miss a, a, a cycle with the IRS? Yeah, if you're on a payment plan, like a 60-month a payment plan, right. you can miss once. You can skip one payment. You they, can. They allow one payment. To oh, that's skip. pretty cool. Yeah. All right, and real quickly, what's the, uh, the the guy who owed the most money that you got off for the least money? The guy that owed the most money was close to $7 million bucks, and we got him off of zip, zero. Zero. Jesus Christ. And he's still a client. <laughs> I bet he is. I bet he lives with you. I would. Yeah. Been moving in with you and your wife. He actually came back uh, last year and had a, a problem with a current year that he wanted us to work on. I said, look, <laughs> we can do a payment plan on that year. We can't get it uh, down to zero. <laughs> hey, real quick. You wouldn't believe what I had to do for the last time you were in here. <laughs> I'm never doing it again. Tell us that uh, lawyer joke you told me because I always screw it up. Well, there's um, this guy who has retained a lawyer at a decent-sized law firm, and he's, he's trying to get a hold of him. So he, he calls up and he says uh, to the secretary, can I speak to Mr. Rosenberg, please? And she said, oh, um, I'm, I'm really sorry. He passed away two days ago. And uh, there's a pause on the phone, and the uh, client says again with a straight voice, um, can I speak with Mr. Rosenberg, please? And she says... He, he died uh, two days ago. Pause on the phone. And again, he goes, can I speak to Mr. Rosenberg, please? And she goes, sir, maybe you didn't hear me, but the man is dead. And he pause on the phone, and then he says, oh, I just wanted to keep hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great show. <laughs> All right, uh, call uh, Michael Ross. We're going to have lunch tomorrow, right? Lunch tomorrow. Yeah, in the Valley. I'm noon. looking forward to it. All right, always uh, nice to see you. Happy oh, holidays, yeah. Happy and holidays, we'll uh, see you around. 866-IRS-PROBLEMS. Call Michael Rosbrook, 866-IRS-PROBLEMS. We're going back with Larry Miller, everybody, from the L.A. Kings. Michael, your major stud. Frank Kramer's with us. It is the Tim Conway Jr. Show. 6-2 to two L.A. Kings over the St. Louis Blues here at the Staples Center on 97.1 FM Talk. Tim Conway Jr. Show live on 97.1 FM Talk. Frank Kramer here. Oh, Frank yeah. Kramer joins us, man. Yeah, yeah. A double shift, and then you got to be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Yeah, back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Oh, Frosty and right. Heidi. Frosty, Heidi, and Frank, man. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They got the weekend off. What time do you wake up during the day? Mm, seriously? Yeah, I mean, during the nights every night. I, w I try not to get out of bed or wake up before 2. Well, thanks. <laughs> so you're reading the card over there. I thought you just needed that just in case you forgot. He has no clue who I am. In the middle of the show, how many times? He's like, yeah, I stopped here because he's going to show up yours. <laughs> they tell me the show's good, though. Yes, that's what you I hear it's hot. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Um, but, yeah, I, like this morning I woke up at noon. But that's because I had a dentist appointment at 2. But I, I, try to, I, I try to go to bed at 4. And I try to get up by one or two. That's my schedule. But you stay up. I mean, this is like... You're oh, I'll the, be up now until 4 a.m. You're in the opposite schedule. So you yeah. get home, and that's when you get off work and you have half the hour. Right. But tonight i got to go to bed early because uh, i got uh, lunch tomorrow with Michael Rosberg at noon. Yeah. Look that's, at my, you. that's my early day. Look at you stroking my Yeah, girl. Michael and we're, I got we're great... We're going to have lunch on yeah. Yeah, man. I, out in uh, Encino, we're going to have a, a decent lunch. A little holiday lunch we have every year. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, folks. Frank Kramer is with mandate. us. Yes. A little bromance. You betcha, man. <laughs> the four of us sitting there. Cal Saul, too. All right. Uh, let's take a couple calls before Bob Miller. I'm sorry. I think I said Larry Miller before the break. Bob Miller is going to be here. But we can talk to Larry as well. You know? Why isn't he here? Well, let's talk to uh, Jeff on line one. You're on 97 FM Talk. How are you? Hey, how's it going? All right, what do you got? Horniest countries in the world, right? Are you still right? on hold for that? Oh, my God. Oh, it's over. All right, buddy, thanks for calling. That was like an hour ago. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it was. 
Um, here's uh, uh, something I, I read today uh, in the uh, at AOL.com. You ever go there? The AOL, AOL yeah. site is really pretty cool. But um, Jennifer Aniston is posing for GQ. I saw the cover. Did you see the cover? Yeah, I, I saw the pictures inside. Uh, I always saw the cover. Yeah, they're at, uh, I think, Pop Eater. Dot com. I believe that's where they are. Anyway, I, I was looking. I, I saw the pictures of her, and then I'm I'm looking at her, and she still looks unbelievable. And how old she's, is she? She's 58. <laughs> 39. 39. No. She's 39, but she looks terrific. I mean, she really does yeah. look great. I mean, for you know, for all the turmoil she's been through. But then I'm looking at the pictures. And I'm like, you know what? I, I don't think you can pose semi-nude anymore. I think you either have to go for it or not go for it, because there are so many hot women who are 18, 19, 20 years old, who are totally nude, and or maybe in adult movies. That if you see a celebrity with, uh, you know, just uh, covering up, it's tough. I know it's going to sound crazy, but uh, I think there's been so much nudity. Yeah, that it's possible. you got to go back to just wearing a men's tie. Yes. All right. The mystery's back. Speaking of the uh, the king, everybody, All Bob right. Miller with the L.A. Kings. How you doing? Nice to see you, man. How you been? I'm happier tonight than I was in Colorado. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Six night. to two. What a night. It's a great night. With a hat trick. Yeah. Dustin yeah. Brown, first career hat trick. He's been great as a captain, and nice to see him uh, get that tonight. You know, he plays not only – he's not only scoring, as you know. He's right. a physical player. And oh, yeah. And third or fourth in the league in hits, and uh, – uh, he's a real leader out there on the ice. Yeah, you got some great guys. I mean, you know, the the the, uh, the season started terrible. Uh, it's a terrible start to the season. But since uh, like two weeks in, man, they, this team is really kicking ass. Yeah, you know, it's a young team, third youngest team in the league. And I think, uh, as we mentioned tonight, what you get with that is you'll get a game like we had in Colorado and get beat six to one, and then you come back here and have a game like this tonight. Right. And I think until the maturity steps in or sets in. You're going to have those nights where, where you know, sometimes you're high and sometimes you're low. And, right. But um, uh, Terry Murray, the coach this year, is a good teacher, and he's taking these young kids. You take a look at that number eight for us, Drew Doughty, 19. He just turned 19 last week. Oh, man. And he's playing like he's about a 10-year veteran. Wow. And was he number 17? Uh, number eight. Number eight. Yeah. Seven, I was just testing you. Seven, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but number eight. Number 17 is a young guy, too. He's like 20. Wayne Simmons, yeah. Wayne, Wayne he, Simmons, He's a rookie. Yeah. Uh, number 9, uh, Moeller, uh, Oscar Moeller from Sweden. He's a rookie. Uh, so I swear to God, Bob Miller's not looking at this cheat sheet. <laughs> the man knows everything about this team, man. It's <laughs> unbelievable. The third youngest team in the league, league or one of the three? Yeah, it is the third youngest. Chicago and Phoenix are younger. but um, Who are some way- of the older veterans that they were lying in the uh, locker room right now? Well, you got guys like uh, Jarrett Stoll, who was new to the team this year, but he's been around uh, the league. He played at Edmonton, but even he's not, you know, uh, right. what we would call old. Um, I counted at one point in the Kings system, forty-nine players, twenty-five years of age and younger, wow, either either is that right? in the minors or some of them still playing in junior hockey or college, that belong to the Kings. Right. And Jesus. what Dean Lombardi, the general manager, wants to do in rebuilding a team is build it so it's going to be good for year after year after year not right. just one year so right. he's he's got these young kids coming up and uh, and uh, i'm you know a lot of people think uh, all the kings are maybe a couple years away from being really one of the elite teams in the league and, and i hear that not from our organization i hear it from other people around the national hockey league who look at these kids that we've got playing say in a couple of years you guys are going to be good. And I hope it happens because I don't know how long I can hang on here <laughs> waiting for him to win the cup. <laughs> well, you know, you go back to, what, 1967? No, no, 73. 73 with the Kings. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the last game uh, or the first game I saw with the Kings. I believe it was in the early 70s that my dad took me. I think I was only about 9 or 10 years old. But I remember going back to the old days where they used to have the uh, the nets on the pipes. Uh, you know, they would, they would, they would have the hole in the ice anchored, and put it anchored, in, anchored, anchored in there, down. Yeah. And when a guy hit that pole, man, he hit that pole. Well, you know, that's been one of the big changes because they knew if you hit that, you're injured. Right. So they didn't drive to the net the way they do now. Now you see them drive to the net because they know if I hit that thing, it's going to come loose. I'm right. not going to get hurt. So that's been a big change. And I think a, a big change for the goaltender because 
maybe he's not as protected now as he used to yeah, be. Yeah, that's you know, true. Right. They don't pull up anymore. They go. They yeah, go they right come, for the net. They come flying. Now the little altercation there at the end uh, of the third period, where there is four St. Louis Blues uh, punching <laughs> one guy in the face. <laughs> that was. Isn't that third, fourth, and fifth, or second, third, yeah, and fourth yeah. man in? I called it a tag team match. The one, the one uh, Blues guy, high note, went in. Grabbed even ons and told his buddy, "You hit him, and I'll grab him. You hit him." Uh, so they all got penalties out of that. But I think the Blues uh, were frustrated. They're a physical team, and yeah. uh, you know they got frustrated at that point. I think at at one point in the game, when they made it four two, you're in a situation where if the Blues get the next goal, right, the Kings are in danger of blowing a four goal lead. And, and in in your 35 years, you've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> in fact, I saw it in our favor uh, here not too long ago against uh, Edmonton. Right. Edmonton got three in the first period. The Kings came back with four in the second. Right. Uh, didn't win the game, but uh, came back like that. So that's usually the April uh, spirit breaker, I call it. Yeah, you right. Know, when they're up five to one and get beat uh, six yeah. to five. I always tell people, you know, don't leave early. You never. Right. I mean, this can change so quickly. This oh, game. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, it just takes a don't few leave, shots. Don't leave, we can still lose this. <laughs> yeah, right. right. I, I just don't add that last part that you had there, Frank. Hey, but you know what's nice about uh, teams coming to L.A. now where there's, where there's two teams is the Ducks will soften them up and beat them up like they did with the St. Louis Blues, beat them up physically and score-wise, and then we get them the next day. Or sometimes it works the other way around. Right. We, we get them, and then they go down, and they're tired when they get to Anaheim. What I mentioned tonight, as a matter of fact, on the air, because we mentioned the Blues had played last night, it's not like a back-to-back elsewhere in the league. It's only a bus ride. We've, we've taken longer trips to the airport in right. some cities <laughs> than from Anaheim to, to Staples Center. So it's, it's not the same as going to the airport getting in a plane, flying for an hour, and play the next night. You know, it's right. it's a relatively short trip. Right, yeah, it's not bad. And it's nice to have another team down here, too. You know, there's a little uh, rivalry going on. Yeah, yeah. And But, you know, the bottom line is they did play last night. So you get to the third period, and you're at home, and you have the lead. Right. You want to wear them down and, and know that they're tired. And uh, I, I look into all sports, uh, especially not so much football, because everybody's got a week to rest up, but basketball and baseball and hockey you look at the team that's been on the road and played a lot of games in a few nights and uh, you can figure the home team's going to have a pretty good chance right. to win that game because they're going to be rested all right bob miller is with us he has seen uh, a ton of hockey and what is it 35 years you've been with the Kings? Uh, this is 36 yeah. 36 years wow <laughs> who is the best fighter you've seen uh, on the kings is it mcclellan was no, he I'm going to go back further than that. Uh, my first year, Dan Maloney. Oh, Dan Maloney. Dan yeah. Maloney. D Dan Maloney was the kind of player, physical. If you hit him with a clean check, everything's fine. Right. You get your stick up around his neck or face, <laughs> and he'd hit you with four shots before you knew you were in a fight. <laughs> you were down on the ice looking up at him like, what happened? Uh, but he was, you know, if it was a clean check, fine. That's part of the game. Yeah. But don't get that stick up around my face. Yeah, I remember the old days where none of these guys had helmets when I went to my first game. Yeah, and I loved it. I could recognize everybody. Now they're all out there with helmets, and uh, sometimes and now we're higher up in all of these new arenas. Uh, it's a little difficult to see, but... Um, yeah, no helmets, and, uh, you know, even there were a few goaltenders when I started. The goaltenders didn't wear a mask. Oh, yeah. There's still one goaltender didn't wear a Is mask. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. And then they had that, for a while, they had, like, uh, a plastic shield on their face. It looked like the bottom of a meat tray, you know, you buy in Gelson's, <laughs> with uh, two holes in it and a hole in their mouth. And I don't know what that protected. Rogi Vashon said that uh, what it was was a fiberglass, kind of a fiberglass mask. Right up against your skin with no padding. Jesus. So Christ. when you got hit with a shot, it still cut you. <laughs> you know. But hockey players a cut that's not an injury. You go get stitched up and you come back and play. Yeah, know? but is that is that still the way cuz I know back uh, at the fabulous form, even before it was a great Western form, when you'd see hockey players, you know, like, uh, um, I don't know, uh, Goring or one of those old guys get hit, they would stitch them up on the bench. They'd actually put stitches in their eye on the bench and then send them back in the game. Yeah, I, I don't know if I saw that too much except in the movie Slapshot, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think but they, they would, would... They would stitch them up in, in the locker room and then send them back on, oh, the, yeah. on the ice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, put five, ten stitches in their head. The, the, but does that still happen, or do they now take them to the hospital and they're no, no, very they'll, cautious? they'll stitch them up here. We had a player, Matt Green, number two, uh, tonight. I got hit in Colorado right early in the game. The puck went right through his lip. Oh, no Jesus. no anesthetic, sewed him up, and he came back and played the game. You Are know? you kidding me? Yeah. Other players yeah. in other sports, 
Let me lay four, around here. Four weeks on the oh, four man. weeks on the disabled list, you know. I mean, but even when you were telling that story, everybody at this table winced, like, "Oh, I'm not <laughs> going to play anymore. I couldn't, you know, do radio anymore." Uh, all right, Bob Miller is with us, uh, a great announcer with the L.A. Kings, and are you still with the? Was Jimmy Fox with you tonight? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know where he is. Probably uh, into the wine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Already. All right, can you stay with us? <laughs> sure. All right, yeah. you'd like to say hello to Bob Miller, again, the, the greatest announcer in the history of sports. And uh, I include, uh, you know, all the baseball and basketball well, announcers. And there are, because this is the most difficult sport to call. Anybody, you know, not anybody, but it's easier to call a baseball game. You can see the guy coming from the locker room into the dugout, from the dugout to the yeah. plate, and you know he's going to, you know, you can see the pitch coming in. You can't see half the stuff here. <laughs> I make you know? it up, you know. <laughs> I'm looking at your glasses. I'm like, how can you even see how the whole thing? <laughs> right. Bob Miller is with us. Try quadruple focal yeah, going on in right. there. Yeah, that's, uh, if Jimmy Fox can still uh, identify these guys as well, right? Oh, yeah. You know what the player, the ex players can do? The ex players can see things. That I'll never see down there because right. they've they've been in that situation. Jimmy can say it went off his skate, it went off this, and all I know I saw it go in the net, and I know who shot it, <laughs> and that's about it. But yeah, they can pick up things, and I think it is because they were in those situations, and they can see one. Uh, I maybe have to take a break, but no, no. one one goal tonight. Dustin Brown, he deflected it with the stick between his legs. The shot came from the blue line. Wow. And he just turned and put the stick between his legs and deflected in the net. Jeez. Now, most of us have never tried that, and it's right. uh, it's very difficult. I tried it. It's never been in a hockey situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try it on the ice next time. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is a remarkable how they see it. Uh, yeah. You know, where, where they can deflect the puck that's going 100 well, miles an going hour. 100 miles an hour. Yeah. And, and you've got that hand-eye coordination to deflect it. And, and not uh, only deflect it, but but turn it a direction, and not only another direction, but in towards the net where the goalie's not sitting. Yeah, yeah. Proloff remarkable. did that tonight. Turned his stick the right way. and Now, a lot of it, you know, they're not sure it's going to go in the net, but, the, right. but they uh, they can deflect it on the net. And he turned his stick just to the right angle and, and scored... Uh, uh, the goal. You know, it's great to see. And again, Bob Miller's with us. We're at the uh, Staples Center where the Kings uh, beat the St. Louis Blues tonight, six to two. But it's great to see people walk around with like uh, different jerseys on. And you can remember the era of some of them. Like yeah, I saw a Bernie Nichols jersey mm -hmm. tonight. Uh, Butch Goring, I saw tonight. Um, the Triple Crown line, Wayne Gretzky, and yeah. you, you sort of live like it's like a five-year period for each one of these guys. Right. You know, it was great. We opened the season last year in uh, London, England. And had two sellouts at the O2 Arena there on the Thames. Took boats to the game. Tom Likas was there. Yeah. 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 And uh, we saw in that crowd, both nights uh, in London, so many jerseys. Not only NHL, but uh, European uh, you right. know, jerseys from European teams. And it was just great to see everybody come into the game with a jersey on. You think they'll expand into Mexico or, or into uh, Europe? Uh, you know, our owner, Mr. Anschutz, has about five teams over in Europe, and uh, I, I wouldn't doubt that someday uh, all sports will be global. I, I really think that. Uh, I'm just worried that the way the NHL schedules games, we'd play here tonight and in uh, Berlin tomorrow night. You know? <laughs> That's the only thing you have to be careful of. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, I can't believe what's going on across the street here. Uh, you know, it's, uh, what is it, uh, 10, uh, 40. It's almost, you know, it's 20 to 11. And these guys are still working over here across the street. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, that's what, it, the, you know, private enterprise is. These guys, uh, you know, they say, get that hotel done. They're going to get it done. But I can't believe how big that building is. Oh, I, I know. I've been it. down here in a couple of months, and it's unbelievable. Two and a half billion dollars. Is that right? Yeah. Jeez. And uh, this it's whole... our owner again that, uh, you yeah. know, did it, Phil Anschutz. And, yeah, it is, uh, it's beautiful over there. And it, they're going to have 12 restaurants open and, and uh, 14 movie theaters, and the hotel is 55 stories high, or 54. And but these guys see the future. When I saw a parking lot there, you know, five, six years ago, we used to park. I go, it's just a parking lot. Yeah. What more can you do with yeah. it? Yeah. You know, know. And then five years later, there's a 54 story building on it. It's beautiful. Especially in this economy, you talk about yeah. uh, having nerve Perfect to go timing. in. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bob Miller's with us. If you'd like to uh, say hello, perhaps. Uh, uh, talk about a favorite game or a uh, favorite play that he's called in the past, 520-9710 and 888-520-9710. Also, Gina Grant and Frank Kramer join us. It is the Tim Conway Jr. Show live at the Staples Center where the Kings beat the Blues 6-2 to two here. And we're on 97.1 FM Talk. 97.1 FM. Welcome back, 
everybody. It is the Tim Conway Jr. Show live on 97.1 FM Talk. Frank Kramer joins us from Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. Also, Gina Grad. And the world's greatest sports announcer. And I'm not just saying that. I actually do believe that Bob Miller is with us. Nice to see you, Bob. Thank you. Nice to be with you guys. And I just want to say uh, I have 97.1 on all the time. Is Listen that right? to you at night. Hey. Listen to Frosty, Heidi, and Frank in the Look afternoon. That. That. Tom Likas, a great Kings fan. Yeah. So, yeah, so you, enjoy. You, so you heard about the break into Heidi's place. Yes, I did. I, <laughs> I was driving. In fact, we were going to Colorado, and I'm driving to the airport. And didn't get the whole rest of the story. Oh, oh you the did story. It. The best part. Oh, man. <laughs> so I had to get out of the car, get on the plane, and uh, so, as Paul Harvey would say, uh, I don't know the rest of the story. <laughs> well, you want to tell him on the air or off the air? <laughs> oh, well, the rest of the story. Did you hear? What part did you hear, too? Uh, like, uh, the closet. Oh, oh, that's you hear what happened oh, in the closet? The the oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. You got the best part. The rest. You're in the closet. Yeah. Hey, now when you're interviewing some of these guys who are the you know the players on both teams, but especially on the Kings, do they all speak English? Uh, yeah, most of them do. Uh, some of them better than others. Uh, you know, Hansus uh, speaks, but. Uh, Kind of a broken uh, English and right. even ons, and but they understand English and and they're they're getting better with interviews. And uh, how about Kobitar? Is he speaking English? Kobitar is outstanding. His English is as good as any of ours, and he grew up in Slovenia. Uh, we kid him; he's the greatest NHL player ever out of Slovenia because he's the only one out of Slovenia. <laughs> he's the uh, only guy ever to make it in the NHL out of Slovenia. Wow. Yeah, and he's really a good kid. And the story is, uh, last year we played a couple of games before London in Salzburg. So uh, his grandmother and grandfather and uh, came from Slovenia. It's not that far a drive. And uh, his grandmother was a school teacher, taught him English. And I said to her, well, you did an excellent job because he really speaks well. And she said when he was a little boy, he'd pretend he was number one star of the game. And I would in- his grandmother would interview him. And he'd, <laughs> and he'd say to her, do it in English. Because someday I may need that, and and here we're wow. interviewing him all the time, and so he's a great guy, young kid, and That's uh, how old you know, is he? He's twenty. What is he now? Twenty one. Twenty one. Single guy. Twenty two. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. How about that? Being Slovenia, Slovenia, being from Slovenia, earning probably three million a year. Uh, just signed a new contract for forty seven and a half Jesus million. Jesus Christ. <laughs> For, for for several years. years, for I think it's six years. Wow, he's a, he's a single gentleman, is he? <laughs> Gina, uh, Gina, sit down, please. <laughs> Come back, Gina. Forty-seven <laughs> million dollars. Not even here anymore. <laughs> wow, she's out the door. Good for <laughs> him, <the> man. <laughs> you imagine the tail that guy's getting. I mean, just going into these different cities. Yes, I can Forty-seven imagine. million dollars. <laughs> he's got to be the richest guy in oh, Slovenia. He has to be. What is the curfew with these kings when they're on the road? Is there one? Not anymore. There used to be. A lot of coaches don't like to put a curfew on because the guy you're going to catch is your star player. So right. then what are you going to do? Right. Uh, they used to have a curfew back in the 70s and yeah, I remember things that. like that. Like but 10 uh, o'clock, you had to be in your room. Yeah. And they now, checked, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, did you ever hear that story about Vince Lombardi with Paul Horning and Max McGee in Green Bay? Yeah. They go to training camp, and the fine is $1,000 if you miss curfew. So the first night, McGee and Horning are gone. They're gone all night. Lombardi catches them, $1,000. The next night, they're gone again. And he catches them again, $2,000. The third night, he says, if you go tonight, take me with you. I want to see what's worth (laughs) 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 3000 Yeah, back then, that was a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, these guys, uh, like, uh, you know, Kopitar, write you a check for three grand if you just need a pocket change. I think I heard somebody in the NBA wrote that. Check, uh, wrote a check to the coach for 200000 the first day of training camp, said, leave me alone now the rest of the year. <laughs> you know, I was watching when, when Gretzky was playing on the Kings. Uh, there was It was late in the third period, and the Kings were being beat. I guess they were down by three or four goals. And Gretzky was on the ice, and I had very close seats that night. I was right up on the glass. And I was right next to the, the hole in the glass where the old photographers used to put their legs, right. you know, through the, the glass. And I could hear Gretzky yelling at the, at the referee. And he was using some real foul language. And he never got thrown out of the game. I thought that was, uh, that was odd. Some well, guys I, get away with it, huh? Yeah, there is a rule in the rule book, uh, uh, prohibiting any profanity from the time you enter the building till the time you leave. I don't think it's ever been enforced, <laughs> as far as I know. I think the referees, you know, they know, They'll take a little bit of that, but right. uh, can you, you get know. a penalty for swearing? Well, you get a misconduct or something like that. You could, if the referee wants to. Is that right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. And I see that now there's, uh, I guess the last couple of years, there's been uh, four referees now. Has that made it better? Uh, two refs and two linesmen. Or two, yeah, but four total. Yeah. I think it has made it better. There was a play tonight behind the play, uh, behind where the puck was, uh, Keith Kachuk. In fact, it was right down here in the corner. Kind of whacked one of the kings over the back of the head and, and got a penalty, and he kind of argued it. We showed it on the replay on TV. Right. I don't know what he's arguing about. His stick came up and whacked the guy right in the back. The back referee can now get that. In in the old days when you had only one referee, he's following the puck up the ice, right. and a lot of stuff went on behind the play because they knew the referee can't see this. He can't be up with the play, and, and it's been better for the referees. They don't have to skate as much, and the thing we forget, the referee doesn't get a break. He doesn't go over and sit down on the bench. Oh, yeah. The referee and linesmen are out there all night long. Yeah. And uh, so, so they've got to be in great shape. And it's a dangerous sport to referee. Yeah. Is the the greatest game, uh, Bob Miller is with us, is the greatest uh, game you ever called still the Miracle of Manchester? Yeah, that, that as far as comebacks, yeah, that would be it in 1982. Um, what I remember in 93, the the semi-final series with Toronto before we went to the Stanley oh, yeah, Cup in Toronto. Finals. Game 7? Game 7 in yeah. Toronto. That whole series was, oh, that was a classic beautiful. and that Game 7 was just unbelievable. Yeah, I couldn't and believe that they went back They went back to Toronto and beat them. Yeah, and they all wanted, they knew Montreal was in so Toronto wanted to play Montreal. Oh, yeah. And uh, Wayne Gretzky got in the elevator and and the story goes that the elevator operator said, well, it's going to be wild in here tonight at 10.30. Yeah. Wayne said, why is that? He said, well, the game will be over at 10.30. Wayne said, my job starts at 7.30. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I wanted to say I called your show one time several years ago. You were talking about, I don't know if you remember, talking about the Stanley Cup, something about the Stanley Cup. Okay. And I called, and the screener, you know, I told him who I was, and, and I said, I really just want to tell him something about You're the like, Stanley Cup. Yeah, right, Cup. it's Bob Miller. Yeah. Click. <laughs> he said, well, how do I know that's who you are? And I, I didn't know how to tell him. I said, well, I don't know what to say, except that's who I am. Right. He did put me on the air, and I okay. talked to you guys, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Bob Miller has been with the Kings since 1973 and has called uh, every uh, or almost every home game, every away game. Now, do you still you just do television right now? Yes, yeah, since uh, uh, 1990. Uh, first 17 years we yeah. did simulcast radio and TV. Right. I do miss the uh, the some of the things about the old Kings announcing, especially the post game show. Where you guys played all of the uh, the goals yeah. at the end, yeah. and then they played that song that da 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 da. I really yeah. miss that song. I mean, that was like you know, I grew up listening. <laughs> was to that, that the uh, like dun da dun da dun da? Was it that song or yeah, it was, one it of those? Went the ba ba da 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 Wrote that. He wrote that, and he bragged that he got Shelly Mann, the drummer, for scale to play it. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you very much, Bob Miller, everybody. Get on down to the Staples Center, man, and watch these Thank Los you. Angeles Kings. They're really kicking ass this year, and they beat the uh, St. Louis Blues 6-2, to two, which, uh, you know, four or five years ago, that was a very tough team, these yeah. St. Louis Blues. Yeah. And they're, now, they're, um, they're still not bad. we got yeah. Minnesota here Saturday, 1 o'clock, uh, early game, bring oh, the family. Great. Yeah. And uh, have a great time. And it's great to be with you guys, really. Nice. Is that going to be a televised game, nationally televised? Uh, well, it'll be locally televised. Locally yeah. televised. Yeah. All right. So, Minnesota, 1 o'clock Saturday. Right. Uh, and, yeah, a great opportunity to bring the kids and let the wife go out uh, Christmas shopping yeah. or Hanukkah shopping Good idea. or Kwanzaa shopping. I don't know what you do. All right. Uh, here to thank everybody is our own uh, Gina Grad. Who do you have to thank tonight? Well, buddy? first and foremost, we'd like to thank uh, Frank Kramer here. Yeah. Yeah. Coming it's down. Good. He's coming down. He's a lot to us. We love him dearly. Frank Kramer uh, here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bob Miller. Uh, excuse me. Bob Moore, Michael Rosbrook, Steve Paylett, Randy Wang. Um, Andy Lou from the King staff, thank you very much. Mike McNee. Yeah, thank you, Andy. Yes, Andy and Mike, thank you so much. Randy Dolan, Ares Adam, Manny, Albert, uh, Detective Rudy, Lieutenant Andy, thank you, gentlemen, for always uh, coming down with us. Everyone here at the Staples Center, thank you very much. And, of course, Mr. Bob Miller. Yeah, thank Bob you, Miller, thank you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, gang, it is the uh, Tim Conway Jr. Show tomorrow, right after Like Is. Stay tuned for John and Jeff now on 97.1 FM Talk. Seven one FM Talk. Two, one, and now. Man. Oh, look at now 
course she's not just annoying people on the air. She's annoying people at Staples Center. Oh, Christ almighty. That voice. How annoying is she with that voice? That high voice. You know she's going to hear this eventually. Oh, who cares? Did they ask her to do that? Yeah. I mean, to talk the whole time? I don't know. just say go. She's the biggest celebrity the Kings could get. Why didn't they, why don't they take that mic out of her hand? Yeah, get it away from her. Look at that. I can't even understand what she's saying. It's a tricycle race between three lunatics wearing wearing uh, helmets on tricycles. Here we go. Oh, Bubba. Adam Carolla, Frosty Eddie and Frank, Danny Bonaducci, Tom Likas, and more. Get complete shows now at 971fmtalk.com.